Hi guys, and welcome to the reproductive system module. In this video, we're going to talk about the gross anatomy of the female reproductive system. So before we move on and talk about the whole reproductive system and the organs and the parts and relations, let's just have an idea about the peritoneal reflections on the top of the female reproductive organs. Now guys, remember the idea of peritoneum that we talked about it in the digestive module, that the visceral um, um, organs of our body, they push against a closed serous sac, and then they become wrapped up by the visceral layer of peritoneum. And the other one, which is the, 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 the layer that lines the body cavity, is what we call the parietal layer. Now, when it comes to the pelvic organs, think about this membrane as it's kind of it, it kind of um, uh, drapes over the pelvic organs so it's kind of coming over these organs and reflects back without of course um, covering them i mean it's just um, yes it's gonna cover some of them but it's just the parietal layer and um, uh, and it reflects back up and that's why we call the pelvic organs uh, as a subperitoneal organs all right these organs they did not push against the peritoneum during development so they are not attaining two layers um uh, uh, visceral layer and parietal layer it's actually they were sitting in the pelvis and then the parietal layer it came above them covering uh, uh, some of the top uh, uh, surfaces of the pelvic organs and uh, because it came over the uterus which is one of the organs that I'm going to talk about today in the female reproductive system it came above the uterus and it reflected back on the on the on the next organ which is basically the rectum here and anteriorly it reflected over the, the urinary bladder so because it was coming over the rectum and it reflected over the uterus I got a pouch something like a pocket uh, a depression because of the parietal peritoneum coming over them and that pouch is named based on the location so it's basically the recto the recto urine pouch all right or douglas pouch and this is the lowermost point in female uh, body and why it's important to know it because if i have a patient with a collection of fluid i would uh, um, expect to see the accumulation of the fluid due to any inflammation in the abdominal viscera or peritonitis or whatever in the standing position i would expect to see it in the uh, douglas pouch or the recto-urine pouch i have another pouch which is between the uterus and the urinary bladder and this is what we call the um the utero-vesical pouch or vesico-urine pouch all right it's basically between your uh, bladder and the, the uh, uterus all right now um, to talk about the uterus you guys need to know that this is your, 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 your uterus and it's basically between the urinary bladder anteriorly and the rectum posteriorly so this is the order the bladder comes first and then the uterus and then the rectum all right so if i have the uterus i would expect to see or i would expect to see that the anterior relation of the body and fundus of uterus is basically my bladder and posteriorly i have the sigmoid colon because you guys in the uterus superiorly it you have first the sigmoid and then down here you have the rectum all right so posteriorly you have the sigmoid colon and down here you have the rectum all right and on either side there is a very important concept we're going to talk about it as we proceed and talk about the cardinal ligament um, uh, but just now as a relation you need to know that lateral to your uh, uterus and cervix as part of the uterus is basically your uterine artery and then you have the ureter itself okay so the urine artery is lateral relation to the uh, uterus and the ureters as well we're going to talk about that into more details right so these are the uh, general relations around the uterus and then um, if we look at the uterus we have the entrance of the fallopian or uterine tubes coming into the uterus so if i have a piece of the organ 
above the entrance of the tubes. I'm going to call it the fundus of the uterus. If I have it below the entrance of the urine tube, this is going to be the body. And then down here, once we start to constrict the, the cavity of the uterus and we get into the cervical canal, it means this is the uh, cervix. All right, and the cervix has two parts, so we're going to talk about them as we proceed, uh, and then we're going to move on to the other organs. All right, so uh, these are the relations and parts of the uterus. Now, um, uh, coming back to what happens with peritoneum, you guys remember that I told you that the peritoneum comes over the organs and it reflects back. So you can consider as this is your uterus. What's going to happen is as the uh, peritoneum comes from above, all right, it comes down, all right, and it reflects back, all right, from the back, all right. So the uterus is in the center, and then you have two urine tubes, all right. So what's going to happen is when the peritoneum comes over and it goes all the way down and it reflects back, all right, it's going to give you those sleeves. Um, um, hung up by the urine tubes here. So basically, this is the idea of the broad ligament, all right? So this is basically the idea of the broad ligament. If you look at the uterus from a top view, uh, from uh, um, uh, a picture of laparoscopic uh, picture, uh, this is the uterus on the top, and then you have your tubes coming on either side. So the peritoneum drapes over them, it comes over, it covers whatever it can cover and then it comes back up all right so what is dangling from both sides of the tubes is going to be the broad ligament now if you look at the top view of the uterus i want you guys to know three things coming from either side of the uterus so if this is your uterus all right and here is your rectum at the back and this is the urinal bladder Make sure to know that if you look at the lateral sides of the uterus, you have the uterine tube in the center because this is part of your organ. And then here you have a very important ligament that attaches your organ to the anterior abdominal wall, which is the round ligament of uterus. We're going to talk about this in a while. So this is the round ligament. And posteriorly, you have the third structure coming out from, from the, it's not actually coming out, it's attached to the uterus, which is the ovarian ligament, all right? So this is basically your ovarian ligament, okay? So I just want you to remember whenever you have a practical examination, um, whenever you have um, um, uh, anything uh, that makes you to try to uh, to identify structures on sides of uterus, make sure that you know that what's in the center is the urine tubes or fallopian tubes, and here you have the round ligament that comes uh, that is attaching the uterus to the abdominal wall, and then you have the ovarian ligament uh, which is attaching the ovary to the uterus. This is the ovary, and this is the ovarian ligament. And we're going to talk about that into more details. Now, if you look at the uterus from here, anterior view, you have something comes anteriorly. Uh, the round ligament of uterus comes out uh, from the uterus, and then it it runs um, it runs in the inguinal canal, and then it comes out, and then it attaches uh, the um, it supports the uterus and attaches it to the lipia majus. All right, so we have lipia majora. So this is a remnant of the gubernaculum. We're going to talk about that in a while. And this is the first ligament we have. And anteriorly, it's the round ligament of uterus. And then this is followed by the uterine uh, tubes. This is the next one we have. And then posteriorly, you have the ovarian ligament. And this is also and, um, um, a remnant of the gubernaculum. We're going to talk about that in a while. Now, um, um, so the broad ligaments are basically those uh, reflections of peritoneum. Peritoneum comes all the way here and then it reflects back. And because it makes two sleeves on either sides of the uterus, we're going to give names to these parts of the broad ligament based on 
where they are. If I have a piece of the broad ligament that is on either side of the uterus, we're going to call it mesometrium. Metrium belongs to your uterus, so it's going to be mesometrium. All right. If I have pieces of broad ligament that is around the uterine tube, it's going to be called the meso uh, sulpinx because sulpinx uh, means a tube in Latin. And if I have a piece of that broad ligament, uh, it's basically a small piece here uh, from the broad ligament here. So we're going to call it mesovarium. All right. So mesovarium, mesosulpinx, and mesometrium are parts of the broad ligament. If you guys look at this picture, you're going to have your um, uh, the broad ligament on either sides, all right? And um, uh, around the urine tube is going to be the mesosulpings. Around the ovary is going to be the mesovarium at this point, And mesometrium is basically on the side of the uterus. And forget about the other ligaments because we're going to talk about them in two more details. These are your ovaries. Uh, these are the, the fallopian tubes, all right, and um, and uh, this is your uterus, and here we have a part, uh, this is the, the cervix, and then getting into the vagina. Now, what are the sources of uh, ligaments? And when we talk about the uterus, I want you guys to know that we have three sources of the ligaments. We have the broad ligament that we already talked about, which is coming from the peritoneum. We guys, you guys know what is that. It's basically the parts of it. If I'm wrapping around the urine tube, this is going to be my, my mesosulpings. If I'm wrapping around the ovary, um, this is going to be the mesovarium. And on either side of the uterus, it's going to be the mesometrium. And these are all parts of the uh, broad ligament. All right, these are all coming from the peritoneum. So if you look, remember what I told you, whenever you see tubes attaching to the uterus on either side, make sure that you know that the one in the center is for the fallopian tube. Uh, anteriorly, you have the round ligament, which att attaches your uterus to the abdominal wall. And then uh, posteriorly, you have your ovarian ligament, which is attaching your ovary to the uterus, all right? The next group of ligaments are basically condensation of pelvic fascia. What does that mean? In the pelvis, we have the same idea of many other areas of our body, which is for support. We need to have kinds of fascia that wraps around the organ and it lines the body cavity itself. And between them, we get condensations we get ligaments because we want to support the organs of that cavity into the wall. So that concept is there in the pelvis. We have something called the, the visceral layer of pelvic fascia, which is what wraps around the pelvic viscera. I have parietal layer of pelvic fascia, which lines my muscles, my bones, all of the surroundings of my pelvic cavity. And in between them, we get condensations. And this is basically between the visceral layer that is wrapping around my organ and the parietal layer that lines uh, and covers my cavity. And these are the ligaments, all right? Now, what's going to be the name of the ligaments of the pelvic fascia that attaches my pelvic organs to the, uh, the visceral layer of pelvic fascia that wraps around the organs and to the parietal layer of the pelvic wall, it's going to be based on where they are. We have very important ligaments related to the uterus, which attach the cervix to the pelvic fascia and to the pelvic cavity itself or pelvic wall itself. All right, and because at that point, at that level, what we have from the uterus is the cervix. All right, so the name is going to be based on that. So I have a ligament that attaches my pupus. Um, this a ligament. It's it not attaches. It's between the uh, the pupus and the cervix. So this is going to be called the pupocervical ligament. All right. So I have the pupocervical ligament coming all the way from the pubic bone to the cervix. 
This gives me support to my uterus. I have another ligament between the sacrum and the cervix, and this is called the sacrocervical ligament or cervicosacral ligament. Okay, and then I have lateral or transverse cervical ligament that attaches my cervix to the lateral uh, pelvic wall. Okay, so the bone in front is the pubis. The bone at the back is the sacrum, and the bone is the and the lateral sides is the lateral pelvic wall. So I have the pupocervical ligament, I have the sacrocervical ligament, and I have the the transverse cervical ligament that attaches me laterally. And another name for that is the cardinal ligament, which is very important. All right. So the transverse. Um, uh, the transverse cervical ligament has another name, which is the cardinal ligament or McEnroe's ligament. That ligament is very important on either side of the cervix because what happens is you guys know that for in order for the vessels to reach the organ, they need to run in a ligament. Now for the uterine artery to reach the cervix and then to reach from the, uh, from the internal iliac to reach to the uh, my uterus and the cervix is down here it, it needs to run in something laterally all right so this is basically my cardinal ligament so the uterine artery runs in the cardinal ligament at the level of the cervix and then it comes to the lateral aspects of the uterus where it can uh, anastomose with the ovarian and it gives uh, supply to the uterine tubes and the ovary and whatever so it runs on both sides. So very important information is that the uterine artery, uh, it runs in the, uh, the uterine artery, it runs in the cardinal ligament here, all right? In the cardinal ligament. Another thing is that at the lateral aspects of the cervix, if you guys look laterally, there is a very important thing, which is the ureter. The ureter runs down to the uterine artery on either side of the cervix. And this is the concept that we call water under the bridge. Your water is the urine in the ureter and the bridge is the uterine artery. And this is important because you need to know that at that point lateral to the cervix, the ureters are coming down below the, uh, the ligament which houses the uterine artery. And this is important that during the ligation of the uterine artery in hysterectomy or any surgical uh, interference with the uterus, uh, you need to make sure not to um, rupture or harm the ureters. And that is how we know it by knowing that the ureter runs below the uterine artery. So this is very important information about the lateral relations to the, the, to the uterus is uh, to be specific the cervix as here is the point of entry to the uterine artery in the cardinal ligament and below that you have your ureters and here we talked about the most important ligaments that support the uterus in the pelvic cavity which are coming from the pelvic fascia as a source and we also talked about the peritoneal ligament uh, ligaments which are all the parts of the broad ligament they are also source of uh, support to the to the uterus and also uh, the blood vessels they run inside them uh, all right and then the last source of ligament we have is basically the gubernaculum uh, early on during development um, you guys know that the ovaries are abdominal organs they were developed in the abdominal cavity and then they were pulled and attached by some fibrous band, uh, fibrous ligament, which is what we call the gubernaculum. What happened is the gubernaculum was very important for the migration of testis from the abdominal cavity coming all the way through inguinal canal to reach the scrotum. And this is why we had the gubernaculum because they were pulling the testis all the way from the abdomen through the canal, the inguinal canal, and it comes all the way to the scrotum, and then this testis came out in the scrotum, although it was an abdominal organ. All right, the same concept, we have it here, but what happened is during this migration, the ligament got stuck to the, uh, at the sides of the uterus, which is what we call the corno of the uterus, and because of that, uh, the, the ovary got stuck in the pelvic 
a cavity, it could not come out, but it's the same idea that the gubernaculum is actually attached to the labia majora on both sides, which is um, the homologous structure of the scrotum. Uh, so it stays attached here, and which is good also because this supports the uterus um, as the round ligament comes out from the inguinal canal as well. And um, at the point of attachment here, we will have two parts of the rem remnant of the gubernaculum. We have a part that attaches the uterus to the lipium images, and this is what we call the round ligament of uterus, all right? And we have a part that attaches the ovary to the uterus, which is what we call the ligament of ovary or proper ovarian ligament or ovarian ligament. So if you hear the word proper ovarian ligament or ovarian ligament only, it means this is the fibrous tough band that is remnant of the gubernaculum, and that is what attaches the ovary to the sides of the uterus and um, uh, early on in development, all right? Um, uh, so here we talked about the peritoneal ligaments, we talked about the pelvic fascia ligaments and the gubernaculum, and it gave me ligaments. The last thing I want you to know regarding ligaments is that I have the suspensory ligament of ovary, and it, it suspends the ovary to the lateral sides of the pelvic cavity. It has another name, which is the infundibulo uh, pelvic ligament. It's basically a ligament coming from uh, uh, either sides um, of the uh, ovary, and um, uh, through through that, the ovarian vessels can reach the ovary, and uh, the suspensory ligament actually is one of the peritoneal ligaments, all right? So peritoneal ligaments give me the broad ligament with its parts, you guys know the parts, and it gave me the suspensory ligament of ovary. All right, so the, the peritoneal ligament gave me the broad ligament to the uterus and the suspensory ligament of ovary. The pelvic fascia gave me the three ligaments. We talked about them, the pupovesical, the lateral cervical or cardinal or mechanrods, and the sacrocervical, the arcanizations of pelvic fascia. And then the gubernaculum gave me uh, one to the ovary and one to the uterus, which is the round ligament of uterus and the ligament of ovary or proper ovarian ligament or just ovarian ligament, all right? And uh, uh, this is regarding the ligaments. Now, regarding the...